All right, welcome to our new car. This is gonna be our car for the next 14 days. I just got it like, I don't know, an hour ago, uh, but I'm, I'm already out here trying to make some images. I have to take advantage of uh, having the car. I haven't, I didn't have a car for the last few days. So yeah, I was, uh, I did miss being out here. This is our third rental car so far on this trip to the US and it's not gonna be the last one. So this is something I wanted to talk about because if your photography involves any kind of travel or going to places at all, uh, you're gonna have to deal with uh, owning or renting a car at some point and it can get really expensive uh, for sure. We got the first car in LA and we dropped it off here in Portland 24 days later, 6,000 miles later it was something like $2,400 that's because we had to get all kind of insurance because we don't have any insurance here in the states anymore because we don't own a car so yeah it got really expensive and then oh and you have to add gas of course that was some $500, $500. and uh, it's still not too bad for the amount of miles that we actually uh, did in Europe, it would have been much more expensive. And it also varies here in the States. I think it goes from the $4 that we were paying in California to $2.50 in New Mexico. We are back to $3.50 here. But for example, in Spain, it's something like $6 per gallon. And in France, in Portugal, it's even more expensive. So yeah, gas is an important component too, of course. Uh, the second car, I got it for a few days, just two or three, and it was $100, $150. And this is the third car, as I said. This is gonna be $700 for 14 days. So I don't know if you've been doing the math, but this is gonna to amount to uh, somewhere around four to $5,000 if we count for the another car that I'm planning on getting in a, in a few weeks for another uh, big trip. Uh, so it's a lot of money. I don't have unlimited budget, I'm not rich. So $5,000 is a lot of money uh, to, to spend on photography. And uh, this uh, raises the question that I was uh, wondering about the other day. If someone uh, was to give you $5,000 to spend on your photography, what would you do with those uh, $5,000? I think this is a fair question because a few weeks ago, before we uh, came on this trip, we had those $5,000 and I decided to spend them uh, on this trip. This is something that we've talked about before when we talk about uh, photo books, if they, are a, if they were a good investment or if there was a, a better way to, to spend that money. Uh, we talk about camera gear and stuff like that. I said in that video that photo books uh, can be a good investment, but I, that I believed that traveling is a better investment yet for, uh, to improve your photography and to, to make you a, a better photography. And $5,000 later, uh, I still uh, think the same way. I still believe that uh, the best way to, to spend your money on your photography is just to go places, even better than buying camera gear, you know? Uh, I could have bought a, a 7R3 or even a medium format uh, Fuji camera. Those are pretty nice. I could have even uh, gone for a Hasselblad. That's my dream camera. I've always wanted to have a a Hasselblad. But you know, if I did that, I could be right now sitting on my couch, just staring at my camera, and uh, I wouldn't have any of the images and the experiences of uh, going to those amazing, all those amazing places, amazing places that I got to go in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, I'm aware that $5,000 is a lot of money and not everyone can afford that. I feel very lucky and very fortunate. And uh, yeah, I'm very thankful that I get to do this. And some people don't have the some people have the money, but they don't have the time. So I'm also aware of that. But if uh, for some reason you have some money to spare, you have some time time to spare, uh, I, I don't know, I would advise you to, to stop looking at camera gear if that's what you're doing. And even stop looking at photo books and just go out, rent a car and go somewhere or get a cheap flight to somewhere and just uh, make some images and new places for you. I don't know, that would be my, my, my advice. One big, huge advantage uh, that we have is that we don't pay 
mortgage or rent at any place. We, we don't have a permanent home. So whatever we are, that's home for us. So when we travel, we are not paying extra for lodging, if that makes sense. When we used to have an apartment here in Portland, if we went a couple of weeks on a trip to California and we paid for an Airbnb there, we would be paying twice uh, the rent here in Portland and the Airbnb in California. That's something that we don't have to do anymore now. Whatever we are, that's our rent, that's our mortgage. So it's not an extra cost. It doesn't cost us more. Of course, there are uh, cheaper places. There are uh, some places are more expensive, but it's our home and we are paying for that. It's not travel. It's not vacation, uh, if that makes sense. I would also like to hear your opinion. Do you travel for photography at all? Like you go on big trips just for, for uh, photography to make images. And if you do, do you do it with your own car? Do you rent a car or what do you do? I, I would love to hear your opinion uh, on this. Of course, me having a car means that I'm going to be going places. Expect a lot of videos and images coming soon, hopefully. We have two days left here in Portland only. Then we're going to be heading south to uh, Sinoma and San Francisco, to the Bay Area. I wanted to rent this car. We canceled our flight. We were supposed to be flying there and we canceled the flight and we just uh, rented this car because I wanted to, to have a car down there to move and, and go places. So expect a bunch of videos, hopefully, and um, um, work from down there. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.